and to protein. And um, they knew that it didn't like winter weather. So they, they grew it in summer, although they had to water it copiously. Um, all little things like that showed how clever they were and um, just how knowledgeable, didn't it? That's right, and the, the leading, there were, th there were three key people, Anne, uh, somebody called Enlil, and also Ninkasag, or Ninil, who was the wife of Enlil. And in the records we do have from Sumeria, uh, it's assumed that Enlil and Ninil have a love affair on the side of the Tigris. Well, it's written, it's written in words of one syllable. <laughs> <laughs> clear as <laughs> clear as can be. And of course, those two were there. And of course, the lady was the chief uh, biologist, botanist, everything yes. else. And she was the Gabriel. She was the governor of the colony. But they were terrifically human. They behaved very much just like us, didn't they? That's right. The, all the emotions showed. They were behaving yeah. like real life people with all yes. the basic problems. Yeah. And of course, she was later described as the go goddess of irrigation. Because in the clay tablets from the Nippa Library, which are now in the Pennsylvania Museum basement, um, she's, descri she's describing the need for water. With the settlement will come prosperity. The water is plentiful. And it was the irrigation of so many of these crops at that particular place which were crucial. Our current yeah. agricultural specialists will tell you from all the pollen cores and details of the climate then that irrigation was crucial at that particular location. But it was a marvelous location for the amount of water that was needed and also for the shelter it afforded, and the rich volcanic soil. They chose the place specifically, and they built a dam, because the water, the good clean water, was coming down from the mountains. So um, she was very precise about that, and they all took care of her, didn't they, when the, she wanted a specific place for her house on the top of the mountain. And um, she wanted cedar fires, and the boss said, Anu said, but cedar fires are going to be very expensive, didn't he? So how are we going to get all that cedar? What did he say? Well, that's right. And the, the, the interesting thing is that they had a council, and they had a council meeting. Yeah. And, and the lady in Sag spoke out clearly. Yes. And at times she was very emotional. Yes, she was crying, and they brought her her favorite drink and her favorite food. That's right. <laughs> and she got her way. Without. And she won them yeah, over, yeah. and she got permission to get everything going. Their biggest problem, and it's a story which occurs in the Sumerian records elsewhere, that they had to dig this great watercourse. Mm -hmm. And in digging the great watercourse, which took the storm water away, mm -hmm. but also provided water when it was very dry, because on Mount Hermon you have the winter snows, mm -hmm. the melting of those winter snows, and sometimes terrific mountain storms. So your big worry always is going to be was there going to be too much water? And in the summer, was there going to be too little water? Mm -hmm. So they had a reservoir which had an overflow and the great water course to take it away into the Wadi al Narif, because we um, now know where it is. We think we found the old, uh, the old indenture, or indentation, I should say, of the water course on aerial photographs. So Edmund can't wait to get out there to have a look, but we do find that there is somebody here who has a Lebanese wife and who has a house out there. So we're uh, hoping he's going to, well, he's showing you some photographs, isn't he? Well, there's a, a whole series of people now in, in Lebanon at, uh, at Balaman University, Christian University in Tripoli, and uh, contacts there in the archaeology department. We've got the Directorate of Antiquities in the Lebanon looking at our report to make a decision. We haven't heard from them yet. And we've got uh, Desmond who's going to show us the uh, video of the area later on this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But on the Google Images, which first began to be put on the websites um, last November, looking down on these Google Images, which wouldn't have been seen any other way, we could see or can see very clearly. In fact, anybody who looks at Google and looks at the area of Mount Hermon, they will see the great water course and see that it's a massive canal type yes. structure. We would like to prove it, you see, that uh, on the ground, that what we discovered and what we uh, understood from all that we've read is true. Um, it would change history. It would change our attitude uh, to so much, wouldn't it? 
That's right. There's a there's a battle, as we all know, between my God and your God, and this God and yes. that God, and too many gods, and was the one God to start with or not? Um, and we have the uh, Pope as the God representative on Earth, who seems to be disagreeing with other representatives on Earth of God. And what we are looking at here, really, is real people who were deified in their absence and missing the really interesting feature, which is our intelligent and responsive universe. And many people, particularly perhaps the most civilized people, we call them primitive in some places, always believed in the great spirit and the great spirit and the creator God, um, uh, which is probably two people. Uh, the Indians in America refer to the creator God saying to them, dig big holes, cover your pits with logs and earth and hide because there's going to be a really big problem coming along. And now we know there was a massive bombardment of cometary debris and one big comet coming in over the, um, uh, the Arctic ice, which moved the earth on its axis. And our friend Enoch, who we find in the text, which Tim discovered and, the, and sought the proper translations of those texts in terms of modern terms, like sluices, gauges, um, mirrors. You see, I just wanted to jump in here to say that they were scientific. Their knowledge was scientific rather than the wishy-washy, if I may say so, feelings that come with religion. They were, um, they dwelt on facts, really, didn't they? Well, this was the tradition that lasted through to the Druids, right, to recent times, that the secular pursuit of knowledge was yeah. their primary requirement. This is a capstone, really, of all the work that you've both done, just to see what Jesus was saying um, about the world he lived in, and what the Path of Light does very effectively is links the old order with Jesus' particular version of Christianity, which should be our Christianity. But she, the, the Path of Light was a translation of two of the most important documents, which have long known to be important documents, but nobody had really translated them properly. And this is what the job that he set out to do. He was the first person to properly translate the cuneiform after Samuel Noah Kramer. And what he did with the Coptic um, text of the Askew and Bruce Codices, which part of which is more famous as the Pistis Sophia. He, this is the teaching, Jesus' teaching to his inner circle of disciples, which included both men and women, where Mary Magdalene and his mother were playing key roles in asking questions. Salome was there as well, and, and it was very clearly uh, advanced teaching reserved for people on the transmigration of 